This program is brought to you by Emory University. Good afternoon and welcome to our first um, chat of the year for our full-time admissions program at Gazueta Business School. My name is Angela Bostic. I'm the Chief Marketing and Communications Officer here at the Business School. I am joined by admissions and one of our current students for today's chat. Um, we're excited to have you with us. I'm going to do a little bit of housekeeping since if you've never attended a chat with us and then I'll let both ladies introduce themselves and we'll get started. So we're excited. We've got a lot of really great uh, topics here um, for you guys to, uh, to hear about. We also have gotten some awesome questions from you in advance, so thank you for asking those. If you've never done a chat with us, the process is really simple. You can submit your question through the modules on your uh, screen at any point in time. Either myself or someone behind camera will direct those questions to the ladies on the chat or off, off camera answer those directly but we'll make sure we get your questions answered either during today's chat or in follow-up directly after. So don't worry about holding on to questions. Ask them as they come, as you think about them. There are no wrong questions um, or wrong answers from any of us. Mm -hmm. um, and your question gets asked to us only, so the whole group won't necessarily see it. So feel free to go ahead and, and ask those away. At various times during the chat, I will be typing, either in response to you guys or response to the folks behind camera. The ladies here will be uh, deep in conversation, so you'll still be able to hear those um, responses. You don't need to take notes. About five to seven days after the chat, we'll follow up with copies of the slides and actually the video um, footage from today's chat. So it doesn't mean drop off the chat. That just means pay full attention to the ladies here and make sure that you, uh, you can follow up with details from the chat um, in the message that comes to you at a later date. Um, if there's any other things that you have that are specifically related to this chat or the admissions process in particular, that we don't get a chance to answer here because it's too granular to your specific situation, there are virtual office hours that are available and information on those virtual office hours will be in the follow-up messaging and also found on our website so you can use it as, ne as needed. Um, so I think that's good housekeeping. If you've got other questions, um, feel free to ask them in the window as you need to. I'm going to let both ladies introduce themselves and we're going to get started with all you need to know about applying to Cosweta Business School. So Libby, you want to kick us off? Great. Sure, thank you. Well, welcome. We're glad that you are here uh, today and spending some time with us to learn about the admissions process. My name is Libby Livingston, and I'm Senior Director of Admissions here at Gorsueta for the full-time programs. Awesome. Thank you, Libby. Wonderful. Hi, everybody. My name is Morgan Bullock. I'm a first-year first student in the full-time program, two years. And um, I did my undergraduate at the University of Notre Dame. And most recently for work, I was there in the Public Affairs and Communications office um, I also did some fundraising there, and prior to that, I was in New York City with market research firm Millward Brown. I'm originally from Connecticut, and I'm thrilled to be here today to share my experience with you. Awesome. Notre Dame is a great school. Yeah, You chose really time. well for, for <laughs> where you wanted to go next, but yeah. an awesome program, and we're, um, we're glad to have you. Yes. Um, so you can leave your, fo your football, you know, love, yeah, that, rivalry. It, there's no team here it's for been you to tough. work about. <laughs> 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 oh, it's so true, but there was a big game here on Saturday. Yes, there right? was a very so, big game. Um, Atlanta still offers a little bit of that, so nice. I, I'm loving it down south, but it's, you know, you, you miss things about everywhere, so oh, I can understand yeah, that. it's good. So we thought we'd get started today by talking about some of the most important elements of the admissions process. And the full-time MBA mm -hmm. admissions process at Gazueta is very similar to most top 20 programs. That means it's rigorous, but it also is one that is intended on figuring out the, the best that they can related to the candidates in the pipeline and to get you all the information you need to present your best application. So these chats are intended to help you to understand kind of the background, the, the, the inside scoop, if you will, um, on, on what you need to know as you're applying. So we thought we'd start off with some of the areas that are most common questions related mm -hmm. to, um, to the application process. So we're going to start off with interviews, mm -hmm. right? And everybody knows that as part of your <laughs> admissions process at a top school, you're going to need to do an interview. Um, mm -hmm. And I think <coughs> it's, it's often something people want to know is how do you ace your interview, whether it's in, to business school or to a job. So Libby, what insight do you have over the years that are ways that candidates can really stand out or truly ace an interview? Sure. Well, the interview is a definite, um, very key piece of the application process here at Goizueta. And uh, I will talk about kind of the process just at the beginning here. And we have open interviewing until um, October 7th. Um, so you can actually go online and you know register for your interview. You just need to have at least two years of work experience to do so. And you can come to campus over the next month and interview with us. So that's a great option. Um, 
at um, the round one deadline after that date, uh, we consider candidates um, just by invitation only. So at that point, um, you will submit your application and then we will do an initial review and then we will offer interviews. Um, and students are encouraged to come to campus, but um, if students are not able to come to campus, we do have the option to do um, an online, you know, web-based uh, kind of Skype um, interview. So that's kind of the process. Um, but when thinking about the actual interview and how to prepare for the interview, um, our interviews last about 30 minutes and it's really a conversation with an admissions committee member or we do actually have um, a select group of alumni that help us on some of our Saturday interview days um, that we train that are here in Atlanta. Um, but those interviews um, by the admissions committee member as well as the alums um, are viewed equally and uh, very um, great opportunity to get to know you better through the process and I think that with the interview we really want to learn you know about your story kind of where you've been and why you want the MBA and what your career goals are and so it's good to have thought all that through mm -hmm. to definitely have you know looked at the essays and answered those essays and you know, kind of so that what you put in your application is going to, you know, definitely align with what you're doing um, in the interview as well. And I think that um, you want to prepare for it like a job interview. Um, I think it's good to think about some of the questions that you might be asked. I think it's good to, to prep. Um, you don't want to sound too rehearsed, but I think it is helpful to get with a friend or a family member and have them, you know, ask you questions. It's probably, you know, it could have been a while mm -hmm. since you've had an interview. So I think that it's helpful to just get some feedback and get real comfortable in that situation. Um, be prepared to talk about your resume and be able to talk about why the MBA and your career goals and why Goizueta. And I think it's also helpful to come with a couple of questions that you can't easily find on the website so that you've really kind of thought through and it's something that you really want to get a little bit more information about. Um, but again, we love the interview process. Um, it's something that I look forward to, probably my favorite part of kind of the process is interviewing candidates. And so, um, you know, it's not something that's really stressful. So it's enjoyable. Awesome. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's also something to put you at ease. You definitely should be yourself in the interview process. Right. Um, and you should recognize that they're using this to learn more about you. Um, we got a question that came in about where you'll be conducting interviews this year. And mm -hmm. um, are they in Europe? Are they specifically in perfect areas? And where should a candidate go to mm -hmm. find the information in the listing of all the places that you'll be? And if you won't be in their area, how can they do interviews? Sure. So if you go to um, our website under admissions process um, it has all the different kind of sections of the application process and you can learn more there about the interview um, and we do like I said open interviewing right now is taking place on campus only and then after um, the round one deadline we will be offering interviews um, on campus um, as well as we will do some by Skype um, as well as if we are traveling to a particular city um, then we typically will offer interviews in those cities if we have the time to do so. Um, so that is where you could find on our worldwide recruiting calendar um, the different cities that we'll be traveling to. And if we are going to be in your city, then likely, you know, if you apply within that particular round and we're going to be in your city, then we will offer some interview spots in those cities. Um, we do uh, do some international travel in the new year, um, you know, to do some interviewing as well. And so those individuals would be invited um, to in-person interviews if we are traveling to your particular country. Awesome. One mm -hmm. more question to you before I move over and ask uh, Morgan some questions <laughs> about her interview process. Um, this is a great one that came in. What kind of nonverbal communication cues um, do you look for when you're trying to assess a candidate? Is there anything that they should do or anything that they, that they shouldn't do? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that you just really want to be yourself. I mean, be authentic. Um, you know, you want to come prepared. Um, you want to be engaging. You know, you want to, um, you know, give us eye contact. Um, you know, I think that you don't want to be clicking your pen and doing some things that are distracting to, um, to the, you know, the conversation. So, again, um, you know, we try to not make it, um, you know, stressful. We really want it to be a conversation and, um, you know, just coming in and you do prepare your resume for the interview um, and being prepared with that and being familiar with everything that's on your resume. Um, but I think it's just having good eye contact, um, being engaging, um, being prepared to talk about your work experience, but also, um, you know, your personal experiences and activities that you've been involved in, your leadership, um, but really just being engaging and, um, you know, just being yourself. 
Yeah, so. Awesome. So this is a chance for you, Morgan, to kind of weigh in and give the, <laughs> she's going to give the, the, I was an applicant, now I'm a student <laughs> right. perspective for things. Right. So thinking back on, yeah. on your interview process, what did you learn about Gazueta during the inter interview process as you were prepping or even during the interview? Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, um, to kind of echo what Libby was saying about being authentic and um, aligning it with your story, I think that, um, I'm going to talk about the interview and then kind of purvey into your question, Angela. Um, I think it's important to remember that the interview is one component of the larger application. So yes, an, an important piece of that, but also how does that fit into your cohesive story as the full presentation that you're trying to make for this school? So you don't want to go in there and repeat exactly what you wrote in your essays or just give an, a, an overview outline of your resume because those are already things that the school knows about you. So this is your opportunity to really expand upon those things and talk about, um, have a more personal conversation with somebody about why those things are meaningful to you and how they're going to help you achieve your goals. Um, so talking more about a little bit about Goizueta here, I was able to, to really understand the personalization that Goizueta brought to the interview process. Because we're a small program and we have that level of intimacy, um, I spoke to Libby actually um, probably October, September before application season even came around through one of the, the um, programs where we set up a 20 minute chat. And I think it's important to remember that everyone here is a resource available to you. So if you have questions or something is really a burning, a burning issue for you that you're trying to figure out, please reach out. Um, everyone is happy to share their experience with you or give you pointers on, on how to um, phrase things or talk about things differently. And um, I also connected with a student and an alum. So really, the, all those touch points allowed me to understand the level of personalization I think that Goizueta gives to its students. Awesome. That's great. Yeah. Um, so we're going to move on from, inter from interviews to talk about program comparison. But a few of you have mentioned that the audio is a bit off for you. Ooh. So I apologize. We'll try to make sure we're um, working on that behind the scenes. Just know that for the final version, when you receive it as a, as a link, the audio should be fine. So it's probably a bit of a connection issue for it. So um, we apologize. Uh, we're going to move on to talking about program comparison because as part of the interview, you mm -hmm. are going to be communicating why Gazueta is a good fit for you and right. therefore which program, the one-year program or two-year program within our full-time um, offerings you're, you're looking to apply for. So um, Libby, when, when people are evaluating between our two formats, because we are one of the few schools that offer two formats and the ability to apply that way, mm -hmm. what type of candidates are more successful for which program and what mm -hmm. things should they look for mm -hmm. in terms of figuring out which program is a fit for them? Sure. Well, we make it very easy uh, because you can apply to both the one year as well as the two year and even to a third additional program on one application, which I think is helpful to students because you start this process and maybe you thought, oh, I want to do a traditional two-year program, but um, then you interact with Goizueta and we say, oh, well, wow, based on your, your goals, you know, you could consider a one-year option um, and they maybe hadn't really even thought about that. So it gives you the option to, you know, we will ask what's your primary program of interest and you would know, you know, two-year um, and then, you know, you've decided, oh, I think I do want to be considered for the one-year as well. Um, and note that you are applying to two programs, um, so you will get a decision for each of those programs. I mean, ideally, um, you get admitted to both, and then that will give you more time, kind of, once you're admitted to both programs, to, to talk to more people, talk to the Career Center, and really get a sense of what's going to be best for you. Um, when it comes to which program is going to be best, I think the main thing you need to think about when considering a one-year program is, do I need an internship to do what it is that I want to do? And if the answer is yes, then you need to think about the two-year program. I mean, if you're making a career shift, you know, you've been in accounting and you want to go into brand management, you're going to need that internship to make that happen. Mm -hmm. So that's something that you, um, you know, need to ask yourself. Um, but sometimes um, you, you may not be sure. So that's something that through our conversations, um, even in the interview, um, even beyond that, you know, we can talk about um, what might be a good fit and if you should consider um, the one year as an option. Someone that um, wants to kind of build on their past experience, um, maybe they've been in consulting, want to stay in consulting, they really just need that MBA to get to that next level. 
the one year is, is great. Um, candidates that are thinking about consulting, corporate finance, um, real estate, um, you know, healthcare, um, entrepreneurship, those can do very well in the one year format. Um, someone that's thinking about brand management or um, thinking about investment banking, even if you have some experience um, in those areas, um, oftentimes the two years is going to be the better fit because the recruiting process is very structured for those um, areas and they pull um, for full-time hires out of the internship pool. So even if you have brand management experience, you're probably going to want to think about the two-year program. And again, that's similar to investment banking. Um, so, you know, we give you time to explore um, all of our events that we do here on campus, um, you know, address both the one year as well as the two year. It is one program office that runs the program. And what's neat about it is that the one year students, they start in May, beginning of May, they do all the core. Then they join the rising second year students in the two year program for the fall and the spring and become, you know, part of that graduating class. So you're actually integrated into the two-year class and we do lots of activities in the summer and at the beginning of that uh, fall semester to make that transition really smooth. So you're having a, definitely a full MBA experience whether you do the one year or you do the two year. It's really based on your career goals is mm -hmm. how you need to make the decision. Yeah, that's a good way to think about it. Um, thinking that, about your outcomes that you're looking for, the experience mm -hmm. in the program will be very similar. Mm -hmm. Morgan, I know you applied to both of the programs. I did, yes. Um, and when you were looking at that, how did you determine which one was the right fit for you? Absolutely. Um, so I, like Libby said, I'm kind of a career switcher in that I'm going from higher education and I'm trying to go into brand management. So that is one of the industries where the internship is really important. So that was a key factor for me. Um, also, I do not have a business degree in my undergrad experience, so I felt as though I needed more time to digest those subject matters. Um, also, because I felt as though th I wanted a deeper um, experience in learning these new, new subjects in order to apply them in my internship. So the two-year program um, delivered on that value. I think I applied also to both because it was so easy. The option mm -hmm. is there when you're applying and you don't have to make that decision when you hit submit. Um, and you're applying to competitive programs, so if one is less competitive in, in an off year, maybe you, can, you feel as though you can get into one and not the other. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but as an applicant, that's kind of how you felt. So it, um, it allowed you to feel as though you were applying to two places if, if Emory was the goal school in general and you just wanted to make sure you were there regardless of, of which way it matriculated. Um, I think also I'm a little bit older and that's why I considered the one year because it was, um, you know, taking two years out of my career or one year out. Um, but again, going back to what my goals were and um, what I wanted to get out of the MBA experience, I really thought that the two year fulfilled those values a little bit more. Um, you know, opportunities in clubs, study abroad, you, those are just more um, available because you have more time in the two year program. Although I do believe there are opportunities mm -hmm. for the one year program as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So yeah. as, as Libya mentioned, you can have a similar experience. It's the amount of time you want to take mm -hmm. to, right. to go through that experience. If you're looking to build on to a, a non-traditional background, it may be a better fit right. for you to, to spread that out over time. Um, right. Had a couple of great questions. And just in particular, you guys are asking some awesome questions. <laughs> so hopefully we're answering them either on air or right. behind camera well enough. Um, but a way to, to understand the difference in programs is to connect with students specifically yes. to talk about that. So. Libby, really quickly, if you can talk about the ambassador program and mm -hmm. how do how can prospects talk to a student to get their questions answered if they're not on the chat? Yeah, right. Well, we make it really easy. Actually, if you go to our admission section of our um, website and you select either two year or the one year, um, you can under the admission section you'll see connect with an ambassador. So you can um, do that online. You'll actually fill out a small form. I'm asking you several questions and then we will match you up. So you can be specific about you want to talk to someone that's, um, if you're from India and you want to talk to someone that's from India in the program, you can note that. Um, or if you really want to talk to someone that's in the one-year program that's doing consulting, um, you know what your interest is and then we will match you up with a current student ambassador and then they will connect with you and then you're able to either through email or set up a time to chat or Skype. Um, about um, the student's experience. So it's really, really easy uh, to, to connect with our ambassadors. And of course, if you come to campus and you do a class visit, or if you come for a more formal kind of structured event, we will have students um, as well as some alums um, at those events, and it's easy to connect. Awesome. Yeah. Great. So we're going to move on to talk a little bit about essays. Um, if you have more questions about program, continue to send them. We'll get them answered off air. 
um, essays. Mm -hmm. It's the time, you know, next to interviews, the other time is <laughs> really be able to let yourself shine and, mm -hmm. and, and show your personality some. Um, essays are supposed to explain work experience for mm -hmm. sure. Tell me, you know, about your background, short, long-term mm -hmm. goals, things like that. But what else can a candidate effectively convey in an essay, mm -hmm. Libby, that would that would help them in their in their application? Mm -hmm. Well, the essays are, again, I mean, all these areas are important um, in the admissions process. But I think sometimes people maybe don't spend the time that they should um, on the essays, mm -hmm. or they maybe try to do. Um, you know, kind of one large essay and then slice and dice it for the different schools and we really can see right through that. So I think it's helpful to kind of once you've narrowed down your, your schools and you maybe you're applying to five schools, um, you know, kind of focus on a school a week. I mean, you know, start well in advance and um, focus on, you know, those particular essays and, you know, we're asking you to answer the question we ask in, in the word limit provided. Um, you know, we want you to um, Talk about your work experience, definitely. You know, we, I don't know if you, you could go to our website right now under the admissions process and you can pull up the essays. Um, but we have four essay questions. One is focused about your career goals and kind of that's a place where you talk about your professional experience. Um, and then we have a leadership focused essay that can be something professional or it could be something personal. It could be something from an organization that you've been engaged with. Um, we also have some sentence completion where you pick one. Um, and then we have, which is our, you know, what we love is the fun fact essay. Um, and definitely spend some time thinking about that and make it fun. Um, you know, and make it interesting and because uh, mm -hmm. that's something that we really enjoy uh, reviewing. And I think that you want to, you know, I think it's helpful to have somebody, you know, maybe provide the essays to a friend, a colleague um, without the question and see if they can tell you what the question is. Um, if you, if they can do so, mm -hmm. then you've, you've done a good job. You've done well um, in articulating um, kind of your response. So I think that that's a tip that I would suggest to do if you um, have the opportunity. Um, but definitely share um, us about you personally. Don't feel like all the questions have to be work related um, because we definitely want to get to know you professionally but also personally through this process. Absolutely, and I think that's a, a really important to to note that we catch a, a good number of students mm -hmm. each year who copy and paste or leave in other schools' names mm -hmm. or create a number of, of faux pas related to the essay process. Um, it's a great place to shine, but it isn't a very easy place to be dinged right. for, for mm -hmm. missing the, um, the attention to detail and the focus mm -hmm. that you would absolutely need. Um, so we're going to move on a little bit and talk about um, the application process at Gazueta. Um, and we might have thought about leading with this, but I think it's important to note that as a top 20 business school, we, as, as all top 20 business schools, have a rigorous application process. Yep. But there are some unique aspects of our process based on our size and our experience and the way that we evaluate a class makeup. So mm -hmm. Libby, can you talk a little bit about um, the application process? You guys get mm -hmm. thousands of applications mm -hmm. every year, thousands. Um, and we talk a lot about the, the personalization and the involvement that the admissions committee does for each application. How well can you really get to know an applicant? And how, how well do you take um, the time to, to figure mm -hmm. that out in each class? Sure. Well, as an admissions committee, mm -hmm. uh, we are working to craft a class to make conversations and projects and uh, just the experience for the students, um, you know, really dynamic. And mm -hmm. so, you know, we um, want to spend a lot of time reviewing your application. It's something that we really enjoy doing. Um, we have a thorough application process, review process, and um, admissions committee. Um, we have obviously our admissions team that's part of the admissions committee, but we also have our associate dean of the career center as well as our associate dean of the program office serve on our committee, you know, are meeting with us regularly to review application files to kind of have that career aspect as well as the academic aspect um, being able to review a candidate. So we do feel it is very personalized and I think that with the different aspects that um, of the application that you're submitting to us, we really do get to know you. We interview every single candidate before we offer someone admission. And the majority of those interviews are done by an admissions committee member. Now that's unique compared to other schools. Um, we really want to, to meet the candidates and really get a sense of, which we've talked about interviews already, but really get a sense of their fit with our community. Um, because we are a small program, our two year is 160 to 180, our one year program is 50 to 60 students. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're the smallest when you look at the top 20 schools. 
and we you know feel that it's really important to have the right people and so the way that we've structured our admissions process and the application process is to really get to know a candidate um, so that we can make sure that we have the right candidates that come into the class and then are going to be able to really um, have you know add a lot you know really make an impact and be able to contribute and we want individuals that are going to take initiative and um, we have lots of clubs and organizations and leadership opportunities and so we're really looking for candidates that have been involved and have been engaged in the past so that when you get to campus you will be involved and engaged here um, we're not a place where you come and you take classes and you leave i mean it is um, this is an experience this is your full-time job and uh, you can't come here and sit on the back row um, and you know you're 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 engaged in a part of this experience and so um, through the process through all the different areas that we require um, we really get to know the candidate but I think that through um, you know interviewing every candidate before we offer admission um, by the admissions team primarily um, is really unique I think for us Absolutely. So, mm -hmm. absolutely um, and Morgan, you went through applying to, to multiple yeah. schools, so are there any yeah. things you remember about the process for Gazueta that were different or that, that individuals should, um, should consider and think about? Yeah, I think the, um, the accessibility was one big factor for me in that I was applying from Indiana and I still felt as though I was able to get multiple touch points either here in Atlanta or regionally that helped me put together my best application. So I attended um, the QS tour conference, I believe if, if anyone's familiar with that, definitely attend. Um, and I met an alum and an admissions representative there in Chicago. So that was really helpful and I you know, had a follow up conversation with that alum and stayed in touch with her throughout the process. Um, that's where I initially got a little bit of information and interest in the programming and um, the academic offerings. And then they had a coffee chat um, over December break. I think some of the students are, are back with families and things and surprisingly somebody was in Indiana. So we were able to meet and have coffee and that student who I met there in December proactively followed up with me throughout the application process, which was really unique, unique in, in my applying. Um, with other schools, I felt as though I, I reached out to the students to say, hey, here is where I am, I'd want to share with you this, whereas um, with Guizueta, I was receiving emails asking me how I was doing and if I had any other questions. Um, so that to me was really valuable and I felt like a mutual conversation instead of just me constantly seeking um, and that was important to me when I was applying to schools. Awesome. Yeah, I, I do think that is something unique and we're, we're here so I, I think we often forget how different that is in other yeah. programs. So. Um, you should expect to be contacted and connected <laughs> in the process. Right. Uh, we're going to move on a little bit to talk about recommendations. Um, recommendation letters are a key part of the application yes. process. And we've said this for each part. All parts of the application <laughs> are key. Mm -hmm. All parts are important. All parts are necessary for you to focus on. Um, each one shows a different aspect of your candidacy. Mm -hmm. and so the recommendation is really where you're, you're finding people who can speak to your talent, to your skill, to your uh, potential, mm -hmm. to your capabilities. Um, Libby, if you had to think about best advice you mm -hmm. would give to a candidate on how to um, find recommenders for their, their application. Sure. Well, we do uh, suggest to you know, try to have your current manager. We realize that sometimes that's not possible. Uh, maybe you haven't informed your manager or your organization, company, that you're pursuing the MBA. Right. So we do uh, completely understand situations like that. So, um, but you know, you want someone that's managed you, that supervised you, that can really talk about the impact that you've made within your company or your organization. Um, I think that you can definitely look at a past manager, um, you can think about a client, uh, you can think about a colleague, um, so you can get different perspectives. We have two recommendations that are required. There is a third optional that you can do, but just keep in mind if you do list a third optional, we will not complete your file until we have all three recommendations. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind. If you do put a third and the person's not following up, then you may want to inform us that you're only going to submit two. Um, so I think that after you've kind of thought through, uh, you know, what you are interested, um, you know, the in individuals that you want to ask to do the recommendations, you want to have a conversation with them. So set up a time to, mm -hmm. to chat, to have coffee, meet with them, um, you know, definitely, you know, kind of talk about why you're doing the MBA, you know, why, why you've selected these schools. 
and you know, kind of thinking about highlighting some of the, th the accomplishments that you've had over just the past year mm -hmm. um, to kind of remind them about these things that they can definitely bring up and add to your recommendation because you want them to provide substantive things um, in this recommendation letter and you want them to be able to provide examples. And so I think it's really key to spend some time with them. And, um, and then in the end, you want to ask them, you know, do you have the time um, and are you going to give me a positive recommendation? If you get the sense that they don't have the time or they're not going to give you a positive recommendation, you need to ask somebody else. Um, because uh, we get a lot of you know, good recommendations, but you really want yours to, to stand out and to, to be strong. And so I think that those are uh, some tips and suggestions of how I would go about deciding who um, to, to ask to be a recommender as well as uh, meeting with them and following up. So. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think that um, that's an important part to, to really be mindful of who is doing a recommendation, mm -hmm. not just what they're saying yeah. right. and how well they can convey that info. Morgan, um, how did you choose and, and yeah. what were the type of people you had to do your recommendation? Absolutely. For? So I, I definitely went with my current manager at the time. I was fortunate enough to be in a situation where um, my work environment understood my, my goals and, and my desire to go back to school. So I've, I could be very honest and open in that environment. Um, and the second was somebody who I met through um, a volunteer opportunity with my alumni association. So somebody that I had known back from New York City when I was working and living there. Um, so what I did was try to put together um, a holistic view of, of who I was in that my boss could speak to my abilities within the corporate environment, whereas um, my second recommender spoke to my character and my personal development um, and how I operated outside of a corporate setting so that the admissions office could really understand who I was as a person and what I was trying to do. Um, again, like every component, I think it goes back to your goals and why you want this MBA and making sure that you can communicate that to your recommenders. So something that I did that I think it was really helpful to my recommenders and for me even as I thought about my process was I put together um, a PowerPoint deck or a packet of information for each of my recommenders and, and told them a story about who I was, this is, what I, this is where I have been, this is where I want to go. And this is what I'd like you to convey about who I am. And these are the characteristics or qualities that I think I display and how I've shown them um, in relation to you. So I think it's important to remember that these people are also busy professionals and they probably have families and lives outside of what they're doing full time. So helping them remember what makes you unique and special and how it's going to help you um, get to where you want to go is, is really vital to them writing a good recommendation letter. And you don't want to risk or gamble <laughs> leaving it up to their memory. So I think um, aiding them in that pursuit is really, really valuable in the longer term. Um, I think one more thing that I got this piece of advice and I, I'd love to share it with you is that um, in your essays and in your recommendations, I believe the admissions office mm -hmm. would rather you t show them instead of tell them so if you can tell a story about a unique quality or something that pulls that, you know, it's a scenario that pulls out those qualities instead of just saying, I am, insert word, mm -hmm. that really goes a long way because it helps them understand the context of what you're dealing with. And I think that's true for interviews as well. Mm -hmm. So, Absolutely. I think that's good perspective. Mm -hmm. um, one of the questions, uh, Libby, is to expound a little bit more on what the value could be of a third recommender. Mm -hmm. um, where, what, kind of role that should sure. should play? Good. No, that's a good question. So I think that let's say, you know, you want to have two professional recommendations from your work experience, maybe from your current job and then maybe a past position that you had. Um, so, you know, it's kind of taking the place of that. But then let's say you're involved in an organization that you spend a lot of time in. Um, maybe it's kind of something within your company, but it's not on your job description. It's something kind of outside of um, your expectations and something that you do a lot with. It could be someone that, you know, in that role that could um, provide additional insight and kind of a unique perspective, um, kind of on your leadership, um, mm -hmm. kind of outside of your, your work responsibilities. It could be something within the community. It could be an alum 
could be a person that's an alum that mm -hmm. um, wants to provide some information on your behalf. Um, it's easy also if you do know an alum, they don't have to do a formal um, recommendation. They could just send me an email or send our office an email and we can add that into your application file if they just okay. want to kind of provide, you know, several, you know, notes about your candidacy. That's easy to do too if they don't feel like they want to do a formal recommendation. Um, we welcome information from our alumni. Um, it's, it's easy to do. Um, so that would be my suggestion of a third optional. Um, we do not get a lot of third recommendations. So, mm -hmm. but it is out there if you want to do it. So awesome. Mm -hmm. And then two more before we leave the recommendation part. Um, for a recent graduate mm -hmm. um, from undergrad, mm -hmm. is a professor a good recommender? And then separately, mm -hmm. if you have a manager from an internship rather mm -hmm. than from a full-time job, is that also a valid recommendation? Sure. So we do not recommend doing a, a faculty recommendation. So, you know, we do require full-time work experience. Um, we'd like to see, you know, when a candidate um, applies that they have at least two years of full-time work experience post-undergrad. Um, if you, you, you know, if you're a non-traditional student, um, we understand that you might be coming from, you know, closer to undergrad experience, but we still would want recommendations from your professional experience from a supervisor or from a manager, not a faculty member. Um, so really there'd be no situation that we would want someone to select a faculty member to do a recommendation for our program um, at Goizueta. Um, and then for the internship, I think that if it was, you know, something fairly recent internship, I think it's fine, you know, if you, you know, maybe have limited work experience, maybe just two to three years of experience and you've been at the same company and you do have an um, internship experience, later in your undergraduate that um, someone would like to, you know, you'd like to select someone to do the recommendation. I think that's okay. I think that you want more recent and professional experience. That's what you want to keep in mind. And also, you do not want to just pick a high level person within your company. Um, we don't get excited about the CEO or a big name writing a recommendation. Um, you want to ask someone that can really talk about, again, the impact that you've made and provide examples. And someone um, that doesn't really know you that well is not going to be able to do that. So I think definitely keep that in mind that um, we're not going to be wowed by um, a big name um, from a recommender. Yeah, I think that's important. You don't want to have people think that that's the most, most important area. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, before we move on, I, I know there were some questions about um, experience, work experience, which mm -hmm. I think comes a little bit in your recommendation letters, mm -hmm. but also comes a little bit in your essays and other places. Mm -hmm. So um, got a question that I thought was a really well done, or well asked question. How does work experience um, get evaluated or take, take taken into consider mm -hmm. consideration mm -hmm. across the diverse field of industries mm -hmm. that people have? So my experience comes sure. from one area, mm -hmm. Morgan's comes from another mm -hmm. area. How do you compare those um, and the number of mm -hmm. years we might have? Mm -hmm. And also, are there any unique traits that the, um, the uh, ADCOM looks for in a candidate who is applying for that, for the full-time program? Are there you know, career traits or habits or experiences mm -hmm. that you all are looking for mm -hmm. in particular? That's a loaded so, question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the first part, I mean, you know, we look at candidates from a variety of different backgrounds. So, you know, yes, a lot of people that have, you know, kind of traditional business backgrounds apply to our program, but we have individuals that come from Teach for America, that come from higher education, mm -hmm. that <laughs> come from the military, that are engineers, that are entrepreneurs. So, um, you know, all of that work experience is really valuable. And as I've mentioned, we want to really craft a, a diverse class and individuals with diverse experiences. And so mm -hmm. that, you know, kind of unique aspect is, is important to us. Um, so it's really looking at the quality of your work experience. That's more important than even the right. quantity. So um, someone can be ready to get the MBA after two years. They've had some, you know, substantive work experience and those two years had probably some really strong internships mm -hmm. during undergrad. Someone may be ready, um, but someone still may not be ready after 10 years. So, you know, everyone's on a different track. Um, you know, everybody has their own story. So we're looking at the quality. So, you know, you know, again, I, I've said this a couple of times, but, you know, the impact that you've made within your organization, um, you know, kind of the progression that you've shown. Um, also, just looking at, you know, do you manage, you know, projects? Do you supervise people? Those are not requirements. But, of course, if you have that experience, that's what you, you definitely want to highlight that. But it's talking about, you know, kind of, the, the progression that you've shown is really helpful, and that's something that you can note on your resume. 
um, you know, kind of showing that you started in this role and then you've progressed into this role. Um, you know, you can show that easily there and we'll see it in your application too. Um, but those are the things that we're really looking at is the quality and the progression. Have you supervised people? Have you managed projects? And you can do that in a variety of different industries. So, And one thing I'll add there too mm -hmm. is um, I think during this process it's very easy to, to start comparing yourself to everybody else and one of the best pieces of advice that I got when I started the application process was to be an expert on yourself and that doesn't mean that you can't speak to other people about their applications and learn about their stories but you really have to understand who you are and where you want to go and how the MBA is going to help you bridge that gap. So by, by learning about yourself a little bit better, you're able to do all of the pieces of the application a little bit better. You can communicate what it is that you want to do and why you want to do that and how you're going to get there. So I think that is also a key piece of, of the experience part is what have you taken away and what have you learned about yourself and where, where your goals from those experiences. I think that that's, um, you know, be an expert of yourself and that goes back to your work experience and how it translates. I will also say that I'm in the core program right now, so the, the first block, and you really do feel the differences of experiences and the diverse backgrounds in the core teams because you're on a, a group of six and you're required to work on finance problems and accounting and econ, and it, it's very interesting to see the different types of perspectives that people bring to that conversation and the ways that they approach problems. Um, so that all goes into helping the learning experience and. I guess Libby's done a great job of putting, <laughs> pulling that all together. So um, just to echo what Libby said about pulling together a diverse program, um, don't shy away from your experiences because they might be more valuable than you, than you believe. But the admissions process is a very self-reflective process. Yes. <laughs> you know, yes. I think people are surprised in how much they learn about themselves. Um, you know, once you start this process and then once you're done with it, it is, and it's, it's, it's really nice to be able to stop and take that time to think about, you know, where you've been and, and you, why you want this degree and your goals and, you know, putting yourself first. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And you, you feel like you're old enough at this point that you figured <laughs> right. it out and then you get to the question you and you're staring at the cursor. Right. You're not, you're not, you're not thrown <laughs> off there. Yeah. Um, so this is great. Uh, before we leave the, the elements of the application and start talking about timing and other mm -hmm. areas, I wanted to, uh, to uh, tackle the dreaded GMAT, mm -hmm. GRE, test score yes. kind of topic. Everybody has questions. You all have had tons of questions. <laughs> I've kept telling you, it's coming, I promise, it's coming. Um, so uh, questions related to the GMAT always have to do with um, two sides. I've got strong test scores. Mm -hmm. Do I need to focus on any other element of the application you know, if I've got this strong score, or conversely, right. I feel like I've got weak test scores. Mm -hmm. um, can I overcompensate, or can I can I uh, make up for that with a very strong overall application? Mm -hmm. For once, for the business, <laughs> uh, for the business school, it goes well. Talk a little bit about mm -hmm. candidates and the balance in your application towards everything else and mm -hmm. test scores. Are they sure. the end all to be all? Sure. Well, you know, I think that we want to to make sure that a candidate is academically prepared for the rigor of our program. So, you know, test scores really predict how you're going to perform in the in the core. Um, and our core is intense. I mean, we actually have a front-loaded core, so we do everything in the first semester, and Morgan is experiencing that. She has yes. a final this afternoon. <laughs> um, it's, it's quick. You know, she's been here a month, and she's, you know, preparing for a final because we fit all of our core. It's a 15-week semester, so it's definitely intense. So we do need to see uh, through the academic side of the application process if you're going to be able to um, handle the rigor of our program mm -hmm. and we look at that with your test scores GMAT or GRE we don't have a preference um, or um, also looking at your your undergraduate record looking at the courses that you've taken and um, you know looking at all of that together gives us an idea of how a candidate will perform in our program um, but we do not have a weighted application we do not consider one area more important than the other um, and I think that when it comes to test scores um, you're going to want to to take the test see how you do we encourage students to fall within our GMAT ranges which you can find on our website and we have a class profile for our two-year as well as our one-year program so ideally try to fall within that 80 percent GMAT range um, also we focus a lot more on the quantitative part of the test so um, we do look at all sections we look at the IR section as well everything is considered but we do want to see that you have strong quantability so we like to see it's not a requirement but it um, to see a candidate over the 50th percentile so 
Um, let's say a student takes the test, um, they maybe take it a second time. We see it's very common to see someone take a test two or three times. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to take your highest score, but what is helpful is if you do have a lower quant, then you take the test again. Maybe you just improved your quant. Maybe even your total score went down, but your quant went up. That is helpful information for us to see. Um, so, you know, we think that it's good if you think you're capable of improving your score, then definitely take the test a second time. It's not going to hurt you. Um, and GRE, um, we do still, we have students that take the GRE, the majority still take the GMAT, um, but to give you an idea of kind of averages when it comes to the GRE, you would want to use the GRE GMAT comparison tool. You can just Google and slip in uh, your GRE scores and then that will tell you um, what your GMAT score would be. And that is um, kind of how we um, evaluate the GRE scores. And we look at the quant, again, want to be above that 50th percentile. But again, that's not a requirement. But if you are, um, you know, at the minimum or, a, you know, a little below, you would want to address that in your application. Um, talk about what you've done to, to prep and prepare for the quantitative part of the test. Also, what you do in your job every day that's quantitative. Highlight the quantitative courses that you've taken um, in undergrad. Actually, you know, we're going to see that, but highlighting that can be helpful too. Um, so I think that it's, we're looking at all aspects, but we do need to see that you're going to be academically prepared for the program. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that's that that's a tough process. Morgan, how many times did you take your GMAT? I did it twice. Okay. Um, and I think the first time I had a little bit of test anxiety. Um, you know, I think it's it's learning about the process that you can't bring snacks or water into the room. I mean, little things like that that you're just a little unprepared for. So I think running through it is great. Um, a lot of the test prep programs offer a trial run through. I believe Kaplan is the one that does that. But Manhattan Prep, there's a ton of them, and they all offer um, some free tools too. So look into them. Even if you're, you know, don't think you can afford to pay for a training program, some of them do have some free um, offerings that might be helpful I resources. I think GMAC does GMAC too. GMAC yeah. too. GMAC. Yep, they offer a free mm -hmm. prep exam. Um, so I guess where I'm going with all of that is, is orient yourself with what the per, what the test is going to be like because it really is an endurance test. Mm -hmm. um, you could have a firm grasp of all of the content on there, but you are just not ready to sit in a room for four hours and, and endure that. Um, I think something else that's kind of important to note about the GMAT when you asked if it was the be all end all, um, I think a lot of times people base their school selection off of how well they do on the GMAT. And I, I actually thought of it from the opposite point of view in that when you're doing your school research and you pick the schools where you want to be, you should look at their 80% ranges and then set your GMAT score so that you can apply to the programs that you want to be a part of. I think that if you just take the GMAT and apply to school and sc select schools that way, you may be unhappy in those programs because you're not necessarily meeting your goals. So I think that you should set your GMAT score goal based off of the programs that you want to get into instead of the other way around. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, mm -hmm. for me that was helpful in that if you don't need a 760, then don't spend as much time on that, you know? I mean, right. it's just, it, there's a lot going on and the application process is lengthy. So. Um, do the best that you can, obviously, but again, aim for aim for what you need to do to be able to get into the programs that meet your goals. Okay, two questions before we move off of G GMAT GRE. Um, mm -hmm. First one is, if I submit my application and later submit a GRE score, um, is that okay if you submit your application before you put your test scores in, or do sure. they need to happen at the same time? Right, mm -hmm. okay, well, let me answer that. So. Um, for our deadlines, so our round one deadline is October 6th, you would need to have um, your application as well as a test score to complete your application along with your recs and your essays and all the other requirements that we have. Um, but if you wanted to take the test again, um, you would inform us of that and we would make a note on your application file to know, oh, this candidate is taking the test again on November 1st, so we'll make a note and we'll be sure to add that test score into your file before we release your decision on December 1st. So you need a test score, a, an official test score to complete your file to be included in that particular round. We give several days after the round date to gather all your materials together, um, but if you, um, you know, want to take the test again, that is something that we can add to your file. Um, after the deadline. Um, but if you don't have a test, an uh, official test score, you know, then you would be moved to the next round. You would be moved to round two until we have an official test score. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So you brought up rounds, which I mm -hmm. think is really important. And so the second question I have kind mm -hmm. of dovetails into that, but also talks about other ways to get information or, or questions mm -hmm. answered. Mm -hmm. So if an applicant is applying in round one, mm -hmm. um, 
and they've got questions specific to uh, pieces and not covered here on the chat. So right. um, things that are related to their d direct application or things related to career information about um, possible opportunities. Our upcoming web chats, which I've seen a lot of you reference, thank you very much. We have one coming up in October on funding your MBA. And we have uh, one in November for our one-year career um, opportunities and then in December for our two-year career opportunities where you'll get a lot more detail about the career process, um, roles that are common for our students to go into, um, areas and industries and ways you can focus. Right. But those are in November and December. So for mm -hmm. individuals applying sure. in, uh, at the first round who want to get their questions answered, I would recommend, mm -hmm. uh, Libby can nudge me under the mm -hmm. table if I'm wrong, uh -huh. um, connecting with a student ambassador to get some of those specifics yeah. answered about their process. Individuals mm -hmm. like Morgan can talk about that. Um, and I think you get a lot of individuals in the program who are, are happy to kind of give you feedback. Yep. Give them some, some time to answer. Um, they are in the middle of, of taking exams or <laughs> being full-time committed students. So they will, they will definitely respond as they can. Um, but the other place is to plan on virtual office hours, which I know mm -hmm. both of those can be accessed from going to the admissions section of our website and clicking on events. And you can see the details of ways to kind of connect and engage. So hopefully that, that does help you overall um, in terms right. of how to get engaged. Are there other one, ways you would mm -hmm. suggest? One other suggestion is we have our Super Saturday open house on October 7th. It's a Saturday. And uh, you can watch it via webcast. So if you can't come to campus, um, you would go in and register for that event and just register as a webcast attendee. And then you'll be mm -hmm. able to watch the actual information session online. And in that uh, kind of hour and a half, we do an overview on admissions as well as our career management. Um, opportunities as well as our just kind of overall program experience. Um, and then we have a, a faculty that does kind of a class simulation. So it's an opportunity for you to kind of get a taste of what a class would be like here at Goyce Weta. So definitely encourage you to check that out. It'll be kind of some high level overview of the program and career statistics. We also have some great resources online career wise and um, where you can look at our employment um, kind of guide and mm -hmm. gives you a lot of stats about um, our successes in the career area. So, Actually, you know what, I'll make sure that I include an electronic version of the career uh, of our MBA employment report, which does have the details that Libby's mentioning in the email that we send five to seven days after with the slides and the video itself. It'll give you the high level expectation, not the details of this person studied this thing and mm -hmm. went to this right. company, but at least we'll give you some of the specifics. There were some good questions for um, Morgan, questions for you about kind of how you transition from your area in nonprofit yeah. to looking into marketing, questions about you know this sector and how and, and what you might take there. Best to have the career folks on the chats in November and December to give you more specificity, but. You should note that, um, and I'll give a plug for the CMC here, mm -hmm. uh, we've been a top 10 program for MBA employment for a number of years now, and there are very few <laughs> opportunities that are not accessible through, through our programs. Um, as Libby mentioned, some are more um, appropriate for the two-year program than one year because they have internship responsibilities and needs. Right. So if it is a career that requires an internship, then the two-year program would be most appropriate. But information on just backgrounds, past hiring companies, starting salary, and those details can be found on our website in the career section, but we'll also include a, a copy with the email as we, as we send it back to you guys. So I recognize we're running, we're running short on time, and you guys are asking some really, really great, quest, great questions. Hopefully, you're getting all your questions answered either here in the window, here by these two ladies, or behind camera. Um, but again, we'll follow up after if, if we didn't get a chance to, uh, to get to that. I want to talk about visiting campus. Because we have gotten questions in about coming to campus to visit for interviews, coming to campus just to visit as part of the application process. Um, Morgan, this question is more for you. Yeah. Campus visit, tell me about when you came, what you learned, and how did that um, kind of um, influence your decision to attend? Absolutely. Um, so living in the Midwest at the time, I think I mentioned the accessibility being a, a huge factor for me. Um, it was more of a remote accessibility before I did my application because I, you know, couldn't afford necessarily to fly down to Atlanta um, to, to for the Super Saturday. I did tune in on the web chat, um, and I was able to attend a couple other conferences and, and conversations where I felt as though I got enough information to be able to put through an application that was um, of quality. So I felt as though my my first actual trip to campus to look at this school um, for the business program I had actually looked here undergrad too so it was <laughs> it was kind of a fun refresher but was was for my interview um, this I believe took place in March because I applied round three I think I had lofty goals of applying for round one but you know things happen um, 
So I, I came to campus for the first time in March for my interview and really optimized the day. I met with an ambassador for coffee in the morning and then I attended a class, um, a marketing program by Professor Ward. Um, so I think take that opportunity to really assess what it is that you're looking for. If you are accepted to this program, what do you need to know to make your decision and get that type of information when you're here? Um, campus is beautiful, so I think when, when you come, you're going to be impressed by that. But talk to the people that are going to be able to give you in, insight into the, a day in the life, um, what it is that you really want to focus on when you're here as a student or a, in a club, and just the quality of life too, right? Um, part of your school selection process should be rural or urban. Um, you know, do, is it important to me to be close to family? Is it important to me to be close to a major airport? These types of things really will um, shine on your campus visit because they become obvious to you when you're in that s surrounding. Um, so I think be aware of, of the things that are important to you when you're on your campus visit and find out if they're here. So that I think is, is a valuable um, takeaway from a campus visit. Absolutely, I would agree. I think it, we have lots of opportunities. There have been questions that have come in about individuals wanting to schedule their interview during visit time so they can have that experience. Mm -hmm. Libby, can you talk a little bit back to the interviewing mm -hmm. process? If they schedule an interview, are there opportunities for them to visit classes, to engage with students, or to, um, to have other interactions? And how do they need to schedule those in conjunction with when they're on campus sure. for interviews or, or other purposes? Right. So, you know, right now, um, we have open interviewing, so um, and our class visits start next week. So if you want to come to campus, then you can you know schedule your interview, and uh, you can kind of look at the class schedule at the same time and kind of pick a day that has a class that we're offering that you're interested in, and then you could schedule your interview, and then you mm -hmm. can sign up for a lunch and a tour as well. Um, you know, if you've reached out to an ambassador, you could always reconnect with them and say, hey, I'm gonna be on campus, could we meet with co for coffee, right. you know, like Morgan did. So I think that it really allows you to, um, you know, kind of set up your schedule, um, but easily online, you can, you know, connect with an ambassador, and definitely meet with them when you come to campus and then you schedule your interview online and then at the same time you can um, schedule your class visit. There are different sign-ups that you do. You have to go, it's not just one process, you know, place, um, but it all is connected and it's easy to find if that's what you want to, you know, kind of make a day of it, which I definitely encourage you to do. Um, you know, when you come to campus, mm -hmm. uh, make the best um, of your time. Mm -hmm. I think it is important that, you know, we do have class visits pretty much mid-September until about mid-November. And then we're on break. So, you know, think about when you visit and try to come when we have a formal event or if we do have a class visit um, because at other times, you know, campus is, could be pretty quiet and you don't really get a full sense of the community. So ideally, you'd want to try to come when we have um, structured events. Uh, we realize that's not always possible. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, you know, you can always visit campus. And, um, but the structured events or when we have class visits is ideal. And I think my second visit mm -hmm. um, was Welcome Weekend. Mm -hmm. So that is another invaluable resource helping with your school selection process because mm -hmm. it, doesn't al it doesn't only give you the opportunity to see a day in the life really but, and meet students who are currently here, but also to meet other prospective students who are applying and have been accepted and could be your potential future classmates. So I think making those connections before you decide where you're going is really important and valuable. Um, because you can start sharing experiences and talking about what you want to do when you get here and envision yourself um, being a student at Goizuato once you see yourself here for the Welcome Weekend. So I think if you're able to attend um, Welcome Weekend, I definitely would, would recommend it. Awesome. Yeah. So we get one last question. Libby, you get to have that one on the way, mm. on the way out. Um, <laughs> it's, this is the idea around the right time to apply. So we've mm -hmm. got a couple of questions who've come in. Um, when do I apply? What kind of score? What kind of test results do I need to mm -hmm. make sure that I'm considered for scholarships mm -hmm. or that I'm, you know, having the best, the best review? Mm -hmm. Is it better to apply early mm -hmm. or to apply when your application is at its strongest? And how should a candidate mm -hmm. know their application is at its strongest? Mm -hmm. So you definitely want to apply when you feel your application is at its best. Um, you know, if you feel ready, um, you know, you've mm -hmm kind of gone through the application process, um, you feel like you have a solid test score. Again, I've kind of talked about the test scores falling in with that 80% range, ideally, is, is good. Um, you know, then submit your application round one. I mean, if Goizueta is one of your top schools um, and you feel your application's ready, 
definitely do round one. You get your decision December 1st, right. but do keep in mind that you have to commit to us about 20 days later and pay your deposit. So um, I think it's wise to really think about, okay, I'm applying to these five schools. Um, you want to apply to similar deadlines mm -hmm. to all those schools. So then you get decisions as well as deposit deadlines you know, dates will be yep. at similar times because you don't want to apply to one school early and then you don't get another decision for two months, um, you know, you're going to end up having, you know, a, a problem there. So, um, or having to pay a deposit before you're really ready to do so and uh, could lose money in the end. So, so it's ideal to, to apply to programs that, um, you know, that you're at a similar time. And, uh, and I think that, you know, when your application is best is that when you feel that you've done everything possible, um, you, you know, to make it um, the strongest application that you can present. So that's just, it's, it, that question's back to you. You know, if you feel uh, that it's the strongest, then it's time to submit it. Um, you don't have to, um, you know, feel like that you've got to wait. If you, um, you know, want to go ahead and do round one, do, but definitely take the extra time. Round two and round three, um, you definitely want to apply by those dates. Um, you don't want to wait till round four. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's very helpful. I know the scholarship consideration that we yes. face. Yes. So scholarship mm -hmm. is definitely round three. So you want to apply by the round three deadline to be considered for scholarship. So any candidate that applies by um, our January date um, will automatically be considered for scholarship. There's no additional application that you need to do. And, uh, you know, we're looking for candidates, you know, we're looking at the merit of your application for scholarship consideration. So, you know, you, um, you know, we're looking at the total package when it comes to scholarship. We do focus a lot on your leadership. Um, that really stands out to us when considering an individual for scholarship. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I would say too, don't wait till the last day. <laughs> you're, I mean, if you're up against the wire, your proofreading just becomes a little bit sloppier mm -hmm. and you might forget some things yeah. that you want to add in. And before you hit submit, really take a step back and look at all of the components together and say, have I touched on everything that I want to communicate mm -hmm. to the admissions office about who I am and what I want to do? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's really easy to get down in the dirts or in the trenches on one part of the application that you feel like is your weakness or that you're struggling with. But remember that they're reviewing everything and you have an opportunity to really communicate who you are through each element. Awesome. And on that note, if you feel that you have a weakness, it is important to address that in your application and you can do that in the optional essay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you feel that, you know, you had a bad semester in undergrad that you'd like to address, you know, please do so. Um, as well as if you, you know, want to kind of talk about, you know, your testing experience and uh, maybe the test is not at where you want it to be, um, feel free to add that information too. It doesn't have to be really in an essay format. It could actually just be bullet points. Mm -hmm. um, just, you know, you could also want to maybe address why you've selected the recommenders that you've selected. So um, you may want to, you know, give us a little bit additional information on that. So that's something that you could address one to two to three things in an optional essay. But again, it doesn't have to be long. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I know we're a little bit over. Thank you guys for hanging on with us. Um, it's been really great. Thank you, Morgan. Thank you, mm -hmm. Libby, for your time. You, Hopefully we answered a lot of your questions. You guys, you guys had a lot of them, mm -hmm. so I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> as I mentioned one. before, we'll follow this chat up with copies of the actual video so you can watch it again about five to seven business days. We'll include um, also the details so you can register for our future chats. Um, if you want a little bit more info on how to fund your MBA, that chat is coming up in October. Let me cheat find the date. <laughs> on October 11th, there's a there Funding you Your MBA chat. Um, we'll also have a chat on November 8th about fueling your career with was what is one year MBA and a chat on December 6th for um, the same topic for two year MBA. So please visit emory.biz slash web chat if you want to look for a way to register for upcoming chats going forward. If you want answers um, to those questions before those dates if you need to. Um, register for virtual office hours, possibly reach out to student ambassadors. Mm -hmm. There is no shortage of ways that you can connect with Gazweta to get your, your questions answered as necessary. So we're hoping that you will take advantage of these opportunities and we are looking forward to, well, Libby is <laughs> looking forward to reviewing <laughs> your application soon. Definitely. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.